Hi, fantastic teachers. It's the end of the year 2022 and amazing food is everywhere we look. There's chocolate, there's, there are mince pies, there's also mulled wine. There are uh, all kinds of delicious food here in Paris too. For instance, I'm thinking about the famous log cake. I know my mom's amazing. <laughs> But also they've started uh, putting in the, in in bakeries and everywhere um, the famous galette des rois, which is made with almond paste and it's delicious. So what to do with all this irresistible food around us? So by the end of this video, I want you to know how not to give in to temptations. And I see three benefits to not giving in to temptations. The first one is that you can feel in control around food, any type of food, and that's amazing. The second benefit that I see is that you can also feel proud of the way you behave, of the way you eat. And the third benefit that I see is that you can then admire the way you feel inside, but also the way you look outside, when you look at yourself in the mirror, for instance. So what I'd like us to do during this video is to focus on just one irresistible food. And for many people, it's chocolate. So let's focus on chocolate. Let's say that we have a jar of chocolate sweets in the kitchen. And many of us think about chocolate, but oh, I can't resist it. And when we think and believe that sentence, I can't resist it, then chances are we feel completely powerless. And what do we do when we feel completely powerless around chocolate? Because we're thinking, I can't resist it. Then many people will eat the food. And that in that case, it would be one chocolate after the other. So they won't just stop at one chocolate. And they also think of the food as powerful, right? And also what they don't do is that they don't pose and they don't question that sentence, I can't resist it. It's just, no, they believe it, they act on it, that's it. The problem is that when we focus on the food, the chocolate, and we think I can't resist it, and we feel powerless and we eat it without any pose, any thought about another option, as a result, we indeed guarantee that we can't resist it. And many people are actually aware of this pattern. So that's probably why some people prefer avoiding some food, which makes perfect sense. Indeed, why would we want to have foods that we think are irresistible, that we know we're going to eat, consume, even overeat 100% of the time when that's not what we want. We'd rather not have them. We'd rather not buy them. That makes sense, except that then we have no opportunity to prove to ourselves the contrary of that sentence, we can't resist it. We have no opportunity to learn how not to give in to temptation. What I always find super interesting is that it's not the chocolates by themselves who make you feel powerless, right? Chocolates, just like mince spice, just like mulled wine, just like galette des rois, anything, they just sit there. They don't do anything. They were made by human beings, but on their own, they have no will of their own. They don't jump on our, in our mouth, even though sometimes it may feel this way. It's not true, right? So the powerlessness that we're actually feeling doesn't come from the chocolates. But if we're feeling powerless, it's because we've decided, even though it's unconscious, we've decided, we've chosen that sentence, we've chosen the belief that we can't resist it. So why do we eat the chocolates? It's because we're thinking we have no other option. It's because we believe we can't resist it. That's why we eat one chocolate, two chocolates, several chocolates, because we do believe that there's no way for us to resist it but it's not true. 
That's really the good news. We don't have to eat to overeat the chocolates. We don't have to feel powerless around chocolate. We don't have to believe that sentence that we can't resist it, even if we have plenty of evidence in the past that we did not resist it. We can start anew and decide right now to change that thought in our mind. So let's focus on that little sentence here. I can't resist it. It's so interesting is the first thing that I notice is that it's as if it's a power struggle between the chocolate and me. And I really hear some of my clients from time to, uh, to time say, well, it was a battle between the croissant and me and the croissant won. As if a croissant could actually win anything, right? It's inanimate, it's food, it's ingredients, it's chemicals, that's it. It's not something that's got a will of its own, that's really wanting to fight and to win anything. No, it's just us interpreting the food as wanting to win uh, the battle against us. But it's not true. So when they, whenever we see things as a battle, a uh, power struggle, it's as if we are fighting against something else instead of being with it, right? And it's as if there's, if there's a winner, if the croissant wins, if the chocolate wins, then we lose. But what if it was not true at all? And the second thing I'm noticing in that sentence, I can't resist it, is that how absolutely negative it is. I can't. I'm just saying I can't, as if it was true, as if it was a fact, as if I was noticing and telling you something that is part of my identity that is really factual that everybody would agree on that, except that it's not true. I'm choosing to use that to describe myself, to describe my behavior, right? And by making it absolute, it's as if there's no room for improvement. There's no room that, for, for change. It's not possible for me to evolve, to do something else that not resisting it. But once more, this is not true. So what to do when we are faced with irresistible foods that we tell ourselves that we can't resist? Well, as always, and it's on purpose if I'm repeating myself because this is so important, the first thing we need to do is to notice. The second step is to actually question what we're noticing, the thought we're thinking, we're choosing to think. And the third step would be to decide. So we first started by noticing, by realizing that we were thinking, I can't resist this food. That's the first step. It's extremely important. The second step is to question the thought, I can't resist it. So here are three potential questions that you could ask yourself whenever you notice that you tend to think, I can't resist this food. The first one is, why can't you resist it? And I invite you to be very specific. When you say, I can't resist it, you can ask yourself why, what is so special about this food? But also you can ask yourself about you, why can't I resist it? What's so special about me not being able to resist it, right? That's the first question or the first set of questions when you notice you're thinking, I can't resist it. The second question is, how is that sentence protecting you? I really believe that whatever our brain's offering us, it's got good intention. It really wants to protect us. It wants to keep us safe, to keep us sane. So why? Why is your brain inviting you to believe that you can't resist that food? And it could very well be because it wants you to avoid buying this food, being around those foods. Why not? But it's worth exploring. The third question I'm inviting you to ask yourself is the one that is, what would it be like if you could be around that food, the chocolate, for instance, and if you did not care at all about it being here? Imagine that, picture it. I want really to you to picture it to see what it would be like, what you would be doing, what you would be thinking, how you would be feeling. Right, very interesting. 
So remember the three steps, notice, question, and the last one is to decide. So I'm going to offer you three thoughts that you could choose to be thinking instead of, I can't resist this food. The first one could be, well, I used to believe I couldn't resist it, but now I'm willing to change it, to change that belief. That's the first option that I'm offering you, among so many others, of course. The second one could be, I'm working on my relationship with that irresistible food. And finally, the third one could be, I'm deciding I can not eat this food. It's you making a choice that from now on, this is it. I'm the one in charge. I'm decided. Which may feel very different from, I can't resist it, and the powerlessness that it brings. And what I'm really convinced is that it's not only possible for people not to eat irresistible food, but it's inevitable once you have the right method. And that's actually what my program, The Stress Eating Solution, is completely about. And what I'm going to invite you to do is that to scan the QR code that you're going to see soon, to have a look at this program that I've created for people like you, stress eating teachers who want to get rid of that bad habit for good, one irresistible food at a time. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I really want you to uh, experience the best end of the year season ever knowing that, yes, you have that opportunity, that option of not giving in to temptation. And remember, you might not succeed the very first time you try it. That's fine. That's how we learn. We learn by making mistakes, by trying again, by making different mistakes, etc. Cetera, et cetera. That's perfectly fine. So be sure to be kind to yourself. And of course, when you need help, don't forget to, you can reach out to me and I'd be delighted to give you a hand. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.